Hello everyone, today I'm going to be ranking all the main characters from the story of Tracy Beaker, so that's anybody that either lives or works at the dumping ground for multiple episodes. I've also included Cam and Ben, as I feel that they're really the only two other characters that I can include without unfairly judging them. If I included people like Gary or Justine's dad, I think this list would probably get quite messy and I'll end up ranking them lower just because they're hardly in the show. I'll be starting with the characters introduced in the first series and ending with those introduced in the last series, so I'm going to be starting with Tracy and ending with Alice. When ranking people like Tracy and Mike, I'm not going to be taking into account how they're written in Tracy Beaker Returns or The Dumping Ground. This video is purely based on the story of Tracy Beaker. We have five categories. Kings and Queens of The Dumping Ground. Very few people will actually end up here. We then have Beaker Club members only so people that are still very compelling. Then there are those middling characters that at least deserve one of Jute's cupcakes. But then we have the characters that are really quite boring and forgettable. And finally, we have the characters that I wish just didn't exist at all, so can just bog off. Now, these characters will not be ranked on how much I like them, but rather by how well written and interesting I believe them to be. Obviously, there will be some level of subjectivity, but I'm going to be trying to be as objective and as analytical as possible. The link to this tier list will be in the description of the video so you can do it yourself. Uh, please tell me your own rankings in the comments. So with the technicalities out of the way, let's start with Tracy Beaker herself. Now Tracy is a phenomenal character. What strikes me the most I think is how much she develops because she's a completely different character from the start of the series to how she is in the end. She goes from being a really angry and really just just miserable person and by the end she's she's still got that feistiness to her but she's a lot calmer and she sort of understands more what she wants. She wants to have this loving family with Cam. Uh, she doesn't mind Gary in the end and the way that she just grows up through the series is just really really excellent. Uh, Mike is also a very good character. He's not actually in the story of Tracy Beaker that much. He's only in the first and the last series, and he's not even in every episode of those. Um, so there's not actually much to go on for him. He is more of a feature in Tracy Beaker Returns. But what we get to see of him is, I think, stronger than anything in Tracy Beaker Returns, because you get such a feeling of him being a father to Tracy and being that person in her life that she should have had from the very beginning. I, I think I can put him in, in the Beaker Club. I think I think he'd be happy to be in the Beaker Club. So um, I'm going to put him there. Um, Cam is weaker though. I think she has even less depth to her than Mike. And she does sort of serve more of a plot function than actually being her own character. She's of course there for Tracy to have a mum in the end. And I don't know how much of her own character she actually has. I mean, when when the show wants Tracy to be back in the dumping ground, she'll be a bit rubbish. But when Tracy, but when the show wants Tracy to be happy, she'll be really good. Um, and the whole contrivance with her and Gary, it's uh, it's it's a bit weak. And I don't think she's necessarily interesting enough for what her role should be. I mean, I think I think she's still very good and she's still very functional, but I don't think she's excellent. So I'll give her a cupcake and I think she would probably be happy with that. I don't think there's much to say with Elaine. She's obviously fantastic, so I'll put her in the top tier. She has got a lot of debt to her, actually, because she's not your generic villain, because she isn't out there to be really really nasty she's not out there to be annoying she just ends up being very annoying because while she has a good heart she is quite selfish and she does sort of put her career above the kids duke actually puts the children before his own career doesn't he um yeah let's put him in the top tier maybe he doesn't have quite as much depth but i mean I just want him to be in the top tier because he is so, so fun to watch and he's so, he's just as warm as Mike, actually. Um, and he serves sort of the same function because he is there as a dad to the kids, 
uh, but more of a fun dad. But he's also got that sternness sometimes. And actually, you do get to, you do get, I think in, it's series four, isn't it? Where he refuses the job um, to work in an office. And that tells you just how much he cares about the kids and just how much he values his job. I think I think he's very very good. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put him in the top tier. Um, I'm also gonna put Jenny there because Jenny is I think she's probably stronger in her first series, but I think she's very very good throughout. She can be stern, she can be kind, but she can also be very childish at times. And I think she's so well suited for the role of head care worker because she's got the respect of the children, but she's also got. She she can she can have fun with them. I think she's possibly the strongest head care worker. I think what later ones miss out on is that sense of sternness and that sense of fun at the same time. So she's she is wonderful, Jenny. Justine's next and she's great too. I don't think she's quite as strong as the people in the top tier, but he's but she's stronger than Mike. She's definitely stronger than Mike. I don't know if the show quite portrays her in the way it should at times. It does it a lot better than anything after the story of Tracy Beaker, obviously. The story of Tracy Beaker is the best show for Justine because Tracy Beaker returns, messes her up, and um, my mum, Tracy Beaker, is just awful with her. But I still don't know if there are times where perhaps she is portrayed as too villainous when really we should be feeling more sorry for her. The time when they're um, painting the room and she's nasty, I'm not sure if that's needed. I'm not sure if she needs to be a nasty character. I think the point of Justine probably should have been she is just like Tracy. And I don't think it necessarily goes for that as well as it could have. But she's she's still very, very, very good, Justine. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep her in. I'm going to pe- keep her above Mike. Louise is pretty boring though. I'm not sure how much of a character she really has. Um, she does at times show her own character. There are moments where she does do things based on her own motivations rather than having any plot reason to do so. But she is mostly there just to cause friction between Tracy and Justine. And she does leave when that purpose sort of dies so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna put her here she's a bit she's a bit boring and i don't really feel much towards her um adele is a bit more interesting though i think i think adele has got a bit more to her she's got that teenage moodiness um but she's also got times where she's more vulnerable And she's got times where she doesn't necessarily know what's best for her and acts a bit irrationally. Um, Although she is a bit forgettable, I suppose. Um, Yeah, I'm going to put her, I'm going to put her just here. But yeah, she's, she's, she's fine. Ben gets to go immediately in the top tier because Ben is hugely important to the main theme of Trace Speaker coming through. Because he demonstrates that money doesn't buy happiness. Money allows you to have a good quality of life. But it isn't what buys happiness. What buys happiness is people being kind and people caring for others. And the fact that Ben is someone who is hugely privileged with the amount of money he has doesn't interact with people on the same class level as him and instead pretends to be poor, pretend to live on the streets so he can experience what life is like for those less fortunate than him. It's it's just, it's it's very, very interesting. And it's a shame he got written out so lazily. Um, Peter is very functional. He's not actually in it for that long. Um, he goes, he's only in the first series and then we never ever see him again. Um, but he's actually quite memorable. And he demonstrates kindness again he's he's a character that's about being kind about being sweet and actually if it wasn't obvious enough already that these children shouldn't be in a care home his innocence tells us that there's no reason for 
people to be disadvantaged like this. There's no reason that some people should have parents, some people shouldn't. And he should, and Peter is someone that should absolutely deserve to have a loving family because he is such a good person. And it is really, really sad that he is in the care home. So he is, he is very, very strong for that reason. So yeah, uh, Tracy, Tracy would not want him in the big club, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna put in there. Um, Zach and Ryan, I'm gonna do these two together because they are sort of the same person. I mean, do they have individual characters? Ew, sort of. They, they're not as, they're not as distinct as Lola Bouncer. Like Lola Bouncer are quite distinct. They're quite different. But Zach and Ryan are pretty. You could swap the names around and you probably wouldn't notice. Um. They're fun to watch, though. We don't know much about their background. They're not... There's nothing that's particularly interesting with them, I don't think. But they're they're fine, so I'll put them here. The same is true for Maxi, actually. He's very, very, very funny to watch, Maxi. He's, he's, he's also not in it for much. There are so many... There are a lot of characters in Series 1 that are only in Series 1. Um, there's, there's not much to him, though. Um, Lola and Bouncer are better versions of Zack and Ryan, aren't they? You've got more of an insight, or you get more of an insight as to why they're in care. You get more of a sense of family with those two, and you get the connection um, as feeling more authentic, I think, because you've got, you've got scenes where they talk about going away for Christmas and not wanting to, and you've, you've, got, you've got a lot of stuff there that really highlights how important family should be. Um, yeah, I think I think I think for that reason I'll put them a lot above Zach and Ryan. Dolly's not got much to her, other than being young and quite cute. Duke actually sort of did forget about her, didn't he? So Elaine definitely would. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting her here. Nathan is Dolly's favourite, and he's actually one of my favourites as well. So I'm gonna put him right up here. He's 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 Completely inept at his job, completely and utterly inept at his job, but he does care about the kids, and he does want to do his job well. I mean, we see that immediately from when he tries to fix the pot thing. Can't quite remember what it is. It's a does it look like a house? But you you see that he he cares about doing his job well. He's just a bit rubbish. Um, if he were older and he weren't a trainee. His character wouldn't work, so he's well pitched as a character, and he is very well performed as well. Um, so I'm going to name him a king. Amber is definitely a big club member. She wouldn't join herself though, would she? It'd be Tracy joining her group. Um, but she's she's sort of similar to Adele. I think she's probably a better version of Adele because she's got that moodiness to her, but she is a bit more chaotic and she is a bit more streetwise actually and I think she actually develops more than Adele. Adele is sort of stagnant whereas Amber as she stays at the dumping ground she becomes a kinder person and a better person. Um, I like Amber. Crash is um, fine. Um, I don't actually think there's anything particularly interesting about him. When you compare scenes where he's really really nice and just pretty normal, and then he gets his angry moments. I don't believe the angry performance. He isn't ever actually angry enough. Um, I don't quite believe that they would call him Crash either. I don't. I don't. I don't really believe that. He's a good concept for a character. I just don't necessarily think he comes through, and um, I don't think. I don't think he's actually that interesting. So yeah, I'm gonna put him. I'm going to put him here. Michael. Oh, 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 um, Michael. Um, oh, he's not great, is he? Michael is not good. Is he bog off? Is he? I certainly want the character to bog off. Um, God, he's an annoying little poo, isn't he? Um, is there, is there any depth to him? I, I suppose he's not completely villainous 100% of the time. I suppose you do get some understanding of why he is the way he is, but it's pretty weak, isn't it? I'll put him at the bottom of here for now. Um, 
Marco's all right. Marco's fine. Um, he's a great example of someone being different and people having to accept people being different. Um, but other than that, he's not exactly interesting. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll give him a cupcake. I think he's, I think he's interesting enough conceptually to get a cupcake. But I don't necessarily think if there's uh, do we do we ever work out why he's he's in care? Do we ever get that answer? I'm not sure if we do. But his ending is great. He gets a good send off. Haley is a more interesting version of Dolly. I know they're not actually that similar, but they both sort of serve the same sort of purpose. They're both young girls. They're both quite cute. Um, and they're both there just to sort of be forgotten about. And then when they're not forgotten about, it's a big deal. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I think I think she, she's better than Dolly, so I'll put her here. Um, Layla is pretty similar to Haley, I suppose, but she's actually a lot more dull. I can't really think of anything she does that's interesting. Um, she gets in that argument with Michael and they have a rivalry and he steals her wings or something. But Layla is just sort of more there in the background, not really having much of a point, I suppose. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put her right down here. She's really, really quite boring. Shelley is great though. Um she's not as interesting as Jenny, as already said, but she she's still interesting in her in her own right, and it's a good it's a good thing that they didn't just do another version of Jenny. They actually created a new character. That was a bit different. She's a bit sterner. Um she's a bit more serious. She's got She's, she doesn't see the funny side of things nearly as much as Jenny does. Jenny would laugh at Elaine being bombed by Alice, whereas Shelley just finds it unamusing completely. So they are so they are quite different. I think Shelley's probably better in series three than she is in series five. Um, I think that she's a bit more forgettable in series five. She's not got as much of a function. I think she's I think she's here. Uh, if Mike weren't in Tracy Beaker Returns, I think Shelley would be more memorable than him. So that's why I'm going to put him below her. Jackie is sort of similar to Crash in how I feel about her. She's got an overarching storyline with her granddad, though, which is more interesting than anything Crash has got. So for that reason, I'm going to put her higher. But I don't think there's that much about her that I actually connect to. I don't really connect to her being a runner. I don't really connect with her being more stroppy at times. Um, she doesn't do anything in the last series, I don't think. I don't think she serves any function in series five. So yeah, I'm gonna put her, I'm gonna put her here. She's quite like Frank from Tracy Beaker Returns actually, because she's got that, she's, she's a less good version of him. But she's got that connection with her granddad. She's got that huge desire to leave the dumping ground to be with him, which is sort of similar to Frank. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put her here. She's 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 fine. She functions well enough. Sid is very fun. Um, I am glad we didn't get more of Sid though. I think more of Sid would have been a bit boring. I'm glad that he was only in that one series. Um, he is the least interesting care worker, though. He's, he's fun, but I don't know what there really is to him. He's, he's a stricter Shelley, but just doesn't have the same authority or presence. He gets the security cameras, he tries to implement more strict rules than Shelley ever would, but it just doesn't go down well. And he's a bit, he's a bit pathetic. So he's still, he's still good. But I don't think he's particularly high. I think, I think he's here. Chantal is the least interesting Wellard. Um, which is probably why she was the only Wellard to actually leave. They probably realised, oh, we can't really do anything with her. Um, but she's, she's still, she's still good. Um, she's not a bad character, I wouldn't say. Um, and she gets those times where she's more vulnerable you get her you get those times of her where you 
understand why she's the way she is and you do feel sorry for her um i don't know if there's anything about chantelle that roxy or rio don't do um so i'm gonna put her here rio is pathetic and weak and for that reason he's phenomenal obviously um he he's interesting as well because you you get i mean all the wellars are, are quite interesting actually because you've got that um sibling you've got that connection that they have because they're siblings um but they're only siblings by their mother and yet they still cling on to that they cling on to the fact that they're relatives because it's all they have it really is all they have um that can get them through and that's how they've got through um so yeah he's he's gonna he's gonna go up here um his taste of his taste of music though is is it's strange Roxy gets to go there too. Um, she's not a queen. She would want to be a queen. She would be very, very angry with me for not putting her in the queen section. Um, but I don't. I don't think she is quite up there. She's she's good. She's very good. But I'm not sure if she's quite interesting enough that she deserves to go there. So I'm gonna put her. I'm gonna put her here. Wolfie is. Um, uh, uh is he interesting no not really um i think he probably should have only been in one episode because if you were only in that his first episode it perhaps made more of an impact because perhaps you could have had that first episode with him running off and could have made a point out of that rather than him actually deciding to stay in the in the dumping ground i don't think it's very interesting i can't actually think of anything he does after that first episode. Does he does he do anything? Um I suppose he gets that money, which could have been better spent. Um Yeah, he's more sort of just there to have to get conflict between Lola Bouncer, which is not very compelling. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna put him I'm gonna put him where I put him. He's he's not he's he's not that great, is he? Uh, I really don't like Rebecca as a character. Um, I'm going to put her in Bug Off because I actually think she's worse than Michael because Michael at least provides some comedy and he at least is young so gets away with being as nasty and rubbish as he is. But Rebecca is older. Rebecca should have more depth to her but she just really, really doesn't. She is a villain for the sake of there being a villain because you have to have conflict somehow, I suppose. Um, I suppose you get that episode where you understand her a bit more, but I think that's a pretty weak attempt to make an unsympathetic person slightly less one-dimensional, because I think other than that, she really is a 2D model of what a villain is. And I just don't feel anything for her. Um, Millie's fine. Millie is gets to go next to Marco, I suppose. She is best in the episode where she is not herself. She is best in the fantasy episode, which says a lot um, about her actual character. Um, she's quite funny, I suppose, whenever she does speak. But I don't, I don't know if she is necessarily needed for the story. I don't know if she does, I mean, obviously by design she doesn't really do anything, but I don't don't know what the point necessarily is when you've sort of done the same thing with Marco. Um, but she's, she, she's fine, she, she's going to go there. Alice is our last character, um, and she is barely in the show. She, is she the character in the least amount of episodes on this list? Um... Is Peter in less? Or it might be Alice, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but in the time we get get with her, she's all right. She's fine. Um, so yeah, I'm going to put her above Haley because I think she's probably... I, I think if we had more with her, they could have explored her more because we don't actually get much with her history. But for the time that we have her, I think she gets to go there. I'm not necessarily sure if she was needed, though. I'm not necessarily sure why 
they decided to introduce a new character like her. Um, so that's it. That is this list complete. Um, I'm going to move Michael down to bug off, actually. Let's do that first. Um, because, yeah, he's still, he's still better than Rebecca. But they're pretty equal, actually. Um, I don't think Michael is substantially better. I don't think he warrants being in a higher category than her. So I'm going to bring him down. But other than that, I'm probably quite happy with this list. Um, yeah. So, I mean, obviously my opinions will change whenever I do this. If I did this tomorrow, I would have different views and I would put people in different places. But for now, I'm quite happy with this. But what do you think? Please do take this tier list yourself um, and do it. I would really, really be interested to see where you would rank these characters. Um, if this video was really, really, really boring, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But um, thank you for watching. Um, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.